Welcome to Talking Money, episode 11. I'm pleased to welcome back Hannah Godfrey for another episode, another debate about some of the big personal finance stories happening in the world of money this week. We're going to start with my pet peeve, which is Bitcoin. And I'm, a, I think, a fairly outspoken critic of Bitcoin. A lot of people are. Um, but it's a really polarizing issue. You either love it or you hate it. It's a Bitcoin, a bit like Marmite. And it I don't want to sort of gloat too much about having seen a market correction this week, but the it's, it's a degree of inevitability, I think, that Bitcoin is a volatile asset, if you can call it an asset. And um, we saw it go up as high as $57,000 a coin on Sunday, and then crash by around 20%. And 20% is a, you know, a bear market when that happens with a real asset like a stock. Um, what's been going on in the world of Bitcoin this week? What have you seen from your side? God, the hatred that you have for Bitcoin is really just coming through. It's amazing, isn't it? (laughs) Well, as you say, it's been a mad week. It's had a huge crash. When I checked this morning, it was $48,000, which is considerably down. Um, And a lot of this has come from because celebrities have been talking up Bitcoin and then Elon Musk, which has transpired to be a terrible decision. But he, through Tesla, invested 1.5 billion into Bitcoin and was kind of talking it up. Um, And I think a combination of these things and the kind of excitement around it caused the price to surge. Then a load of people looked at it and just went, that can't be right, Mm. took out their money and that's why the price has dipped. Um, As I mean, we've talked about before how this is a, a, a volatile, Asset, maybe not asset. I know how you feel about that. I think um, I am curious. What, what's really captured my attention, I think, in the last few weeks when I've been looking at Bitcoin and thinking about this, is now the number of major financial institutions mm. that seem to be giving it the time of day that previously wouldn't. And the best example that sums this up is JP Morgan, yep. which very, very recently, I believe it was early last week said that it will have to be involved in Bitcoin because of investor demand. Now, this is a major step away from leaders at JP Morgan, I think four years ago, Mm. that said that Bitcoin was a fraud and it was worse than tulip bulbs, which obviously is referencing the first major bubble in finance when investors madly piled money into tulips and drove up the price. Um, We've got MasterCard as well, which has said it will start supporting cryptocurrencies, of which obviously Bitcoin is the biggest one. Um, BMY Mellon has said it will eventually accept cryptocurrencies. A couple of BlackRock funds are allowing investors to put money into Bitcoin. So it does feel that there's this general acceptance from more traditional finance. But what I can't wrap my head around, and maybe you as somebody that's a bit more specialist when it comes to finance can help me make sense of, is how can all of these things be true at once? Because if on the one hand you have companies like MasterCard, companies like Tesla, I should say as well, Tesla said that you would be able to buy things in Bitcoin from Tesla. That is very much a currency. Uh, which is what Bitcoin was intended to be and is the logic behind Bitcoin initially. At the same time, though, you have the likes of BlackRock using it as an investment through their funds that you can put money in. And I can't square the circle of how you could make Bitcoin work as both a currency and an investment. I think there are some very, very high level complicated economics that could mean under certain circumstances that could be the case. But at that point, you're talking about bonds and Bitcoin and things like that, which at the moment don't exist. And that's hideously, hideously complicated. Um, So I can't square that circle. And so the three, to my mind, there's three outcomes for Bitcoin. One is that it it actually is used as a currency in the way it was intended. So it's used as that untraceable currency. I think that's the most favorable outcome for Bitcoin, because I think that might maybe the price would rise in it ever so slightly, but it would kind of, you know, the market would find a way to cap it off and it would Mm. become less volatile because it's being used as a currency. People wouldn't be hoarding it anymore. And that really is the best outcome for Bitcoin, because that's as it was intended. The second outcome is that that nearly happens, but then you have regulators getting involved which ends up kind of destroying Bitcoin's USP. So for instance, the US Treasury has already come out and said, 
that if banks are going to want to use Bitcoin, they're going to have to record the transaction in the yeah. same way as they record any other transaction, which really kills Bitcoin's USP, which really kind of suggests, well, then why do you bother with Bitcoin? Mm. I'm sure some people would, but I mean, that would surely make it a very, very nichely used currency and it would really bring the price down for anybody mm. that's invested in it. The third outcome is that it stays as an investment. And that really doesn't work in my mind because at that point, Bitcoin has no use. You've essentially mm. just created something, driven the price up massively, and you're then not going to use it for anything. And even other investments that are you know, non-mainstream, non-regulated, so maybe wine, holiday properties, paintings, yeah. things like mm. that, they have at least got a way to measure value and have a use of some sort. Mm. Bitcoin doesn't have any of that. So I can't make sense of this, basically. And I've been trying to be quite open minded about Bitcoin because I can imagine a world in which there is use for it. But I don't think it's how it's being used now. So I'm curious to hear what you think. I, I think I'm I'm as confused about the outlook for Bitcoin as, as you sound in that in that explanation, in that sort of range of scenarios. And you're right. It, it, it At the moment. It is useless as a currency. And and Janet Yellen, who's the new US Treasury Secretary, came out on Monday and said it's an extremely inefficient way of conducting transactions. So because of its price volatility, it just doesn't work as a as a currency, as a way of exchanging value and transactions. And hearing that Tesla's now going to accept Bitcoin as a way to buy their cars, um, makes no sense because you know well, one day you might be buying a tesla for thirty thousand dollars and another day you might be buying it for a hundred thousand dollars there's so much volatility in the price and I, I can't see tesla being particularly happy to accept bitcoin as a payment method if what they're getting people are effectively gaming the market and gaming that volatility so while there's so much volatility in the price of bitcoin i don't see it being used as a, a currency I, I don't see it being used as a store of wealth because it's not backed by anything. I mean, it is effectively US dollar. And that's the, the sort of the weird thing about these Bitcoin evangelists who think that it's going to replace the US dollar. And of course, it is the US dollar, it's priced in US dollars, it's tied to it in that in that respect. Um, yeah, the whole the whole thing to me is is fascinating, but also quite terrifying. And it's not, of course, just Bitcoin, there's a whole world of cryptocurrencies out there. I've been doing some digging this week into something called NFTs or non fungible transactions. And I'm not sure if you've come across these things before called crypto punks. And they're effectively digital artwork with 10,000 of them, and they were generated automatically by a computer. They were tied to a cryptocurrency called Ethereum. And there's now a market, people trade these things because they're recorded on the blockchain and they can only be one of each and ownership can be determined by the blockchain. And one of these crypto punks, I think about a week ago, and it was, um, there's lots of different types of them. This was an ape, so it looked like a monkey. It sold for $2 million. A tiny pixel by pixel type digital artwork that was automatically generated. That There is a degree of madness in this cryptocurrency market. I think that's the only way to say it. People believe, genuinely believe, um, that this has future utility and value. And I, I think a lot of it is a genuine belief. A lot of it is people just getting caught up in the hype. And it doesn't help when the likes of JP Morgan then you know, do a complete U-turn on previous very sensible comments, calling it a bubble, and then get involved. And we've seen Ruffer do that here in the UK as well. Um, they invested, I think, about 1.5% of their portfolio in Bitcoin, and they actually they got the original investment back out again because the price went up but it was luck it wasn't there was no skill involved in that it wasn't an investment uh, and the whole thing with tesla and elon musk and I, I hold elon musk in a great deal of regard in terms of his innovation and his ambition and everything else but he's now he's now hitched his wagon to the bitcoin price and even though yeah the amount of bitcoin tesla owned 1.5 billion dollars as you said is a tiny, tiny percentage of um, the overall market cap of Tesla, which is about $670 billion. They moved in tandem. So when Bitcoin went down 20%, so did Tesla stock. And Elon Musk lost his top spot as the richest man in the world. So Jeff Bezos is back up there now. So uh, it, it, this is going to take time to play out. And I think we're going to have critics like me who just you know, don't see real value in this thing and don't understand why everyone's getting so excited about it. And we're going to have evangelists on the other side who believe Bitcoin is the only future and it will come of age. And I think this will just run and run for several years. This is not going to, 
this is not going to change the world, the financial markets overnight. This is not going to become suddenly the mainstream reserve, global reserve currency overnight. If that ever did happen, we're talking years down the line, and that doesn't necessarily mean the price of Bitcoin is going to go through the roof to the moon, as these, um, these people say. But this is great. We're both having lovely rants about it. And I, I think that's, that, that makes it, that, that really sums up what Bitcoin is. People have very strong opinions about it. They get very passionate when they talk about it, either, either for or against. Um, but I mean, if, if you were to sort of try and predict the next step for Bitcoin, it could either go either way, couldn't it? And there's, no, there's, no, there's nothing supporting it. What, what do you think might happen next? Well, I'm, I honestly, I, I really don't know. I couldn't even call it. But as a point on the current, the, as you, you make a good point about the currency, and I all too have thought, well, why on earth would anybody accept Bitcoin as a currency? Because mm. it's just, you know, you can't price what's going to happen to your stock. But could it be a situation where the price of an item, say a Tesla car, whatever, is determined in pounds, dollars, whatever, it, wherever you happen to be in the world. And then you can just use Bitcoin to buy it at the price that it has been determined by the trader, the trader, the, the, whatever the, whatever dealer, the, the dealer, is. the dealer, the dealer, the dealer, that'll do. Could, could maybe that work? Because I, like I said, the only way I can see this working is if it was used as a currency. Yeah. And that's the only way that I can see a currency working. So it's not going to be a case of saying a Tesla Model 3 costs one Bitcoin. They're still no. going to say it costs $40,000. And then the amount of Bitcoin you use to buy it is variable. That that makes a bit more sense to me. But I think there's still issues around trying to sort of game it and then what's Tesla left holding. Um, and it, it, you know, it, it ties. But again, going back to my point, that ties the value of a Bitcoin to the value of the US dollar. And it's not it's not a separate, distinct currency in that sense. It is the US dollar, um, but a much more volatile version that has mm. lots of security you know, issues and concerns. And then you've, you've again got issues. And somebody asked me this question on YouTube the other day, which is what happens when banks, which are heavily regulated, um, no longer agree to transact from coin exchanges and we've had one example i can't remember which i think it may have been hsbc here in the uk um basically refused to accept money in or out of um coinbase and other crypto exchanges so you've got your portfolio on coinbase and others and all of a sudden you can't turn that back into real money you can actually use in most places because your bank has closed the doors to it and said no we, we don't trust that transaction you know there's issues around anti-money laundering etc so the, the, the whole market, I think, is still so immature that it's going to take time to work out all these flaws, work out what it actually stands for. You're right. It, it can't be both a currency and an asset. It has to choose. It has to be one or the other. Mm, I, I think it definitely, at this point, I think people that go and, and buy Bitcoin, I think sensibly looking i mean they're not investors they're not investing and at this point it no. is just gambling that's mm. what it is and it, i i too have a lot of respect for elon musk actually and i think what he's done is incredibly innovative and he does he does some awful things too but he does kind of make me laugh um and i probably sort of like him more than i should but what he did there was really stupid i think actually he just gambled 1.5 billion of tesla on Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And unsurprisingly, he's now feeling the wrath of people that were holding Tesla beforehand. And as a consequence, the value of Tesla has gone down. I, I still wouldn't invest in Bitcoin. And I still wouldn't <laughs> suggest any of my friends do. But I, I, yeah, I mean, I'm no further forward here, am I? I just, I think the most favorable outcome is that we use it as a currency. But as you say, the market is too immature to be able to give us a sensible outlook of how that might work. 